All right, guys, let's talk about how I won over $200 worth of price support with only 30 bucks. As you saw from episode one all the way to episode two, I've uh, started with three structure decks. And in the small time frame that we have, I was able to accumulate a lot of price support with only, you know, $30. Uh, last week, I pulled a triple tactic thrust, which is about like $70, $75, uh, $80 worth of value uh, after combining with everything else that I pulled from the, the boxes and, and the OTS packs. And now I'm going to be showing you what is the result of all of those um, price support, right? Like what upgrades did I make to the deck and what does it look like right now? Um, I'm actually really, really happy with how the deck looks like post upgrades. And I would say this is actually very, totally, very close to the final build. Um, and so I, I will be really excited to share you guys with that soon. Um, but let's get started into this week's upgrades. So first off, I want to make the deck even better. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some of the upgrades I made to the deck that I think were very uh, important for me to uh, win this case tournament that I just played in, right? So this is going to be the list that I won a case tournament with, uh, with my friends. And I'm going to be showing you guys and opening the prize support that we got today as well. So first things first, triple infinite impermanence. This is actually came out in another structure deck um, um, as well, which is the, uh, the cyber dark structure deck. And so it's really cool to be, uh, you know, utilizing a structure deck uh, from, you know, something else as well and, and, you know, putting it in their deck. So shout out to the Cyber Dark Structure Deck. Um, three Infinite Imperm. It's really, really good uh, because it works really well with your deck. It triggers Sarah. Uh, it's an easy card to pitch off of Holotea. Um, and, you know, it's just overall a very good, good card. I'm happy I played it. And then added three Nibru, the Primal Being. This card is actually really, really cheap. So the playset of Infinite Impermanence is about $24, and a playset of Nibru's is about like $12. So you see that this is about like $36 worth of value so far um, for very, very good staple cards that you're going to need um, in other formats and beyond, right? So the reason why I decided to play Nibru is because a lot of people um, want to lock all my spell and trap zones, uh, like especially playing Kashtira, and having Nibru is a very strong defensive option, being able to punish people who overextended. If my opponent decides to not overstand and made a rise out on four summons, I can use cards like Infinite Impermanence to negate it going second and then play the rest of my turn out. So having both of these cards um, in my deck means that they can, you know, by playing around Nibru, uh, they play into Infinite Impermanence and vice versa. And I think uh, you can also, when you go first, having a Nibru to back up your board is very strong because you don't mind nibbing your entire board because you have cards like Holotea for follow-up and, you know, grinding with your opponent as well as like back row. So like you don't really care about losing your front row, aka your monsters. So that's why I think Nibru is really, really good in this deck as well. Um, next, um, that's going to be the only changes I made to the main deck. So only these six cards um, went into the main deck. The other thing that I uh, wanted to do was work on my side deck and, you know, make my side deck uh, way better, right? So let me show you guys the cards I played, right? So two Heavy Storm Dusters. The main reason for this is because um, I expected more Trap Chicks uh, to be popular, and I think Heavy Storm Dusters is really good for that. Uh, Heavy Storm Duster is also really good into like Labyrinth matchup, which I expected, um, you know, some people to play. So I figured, you know, having some back row move is really good. And also, like, if you end on Sarah, you can like have Sarah, Heavy Storm Duster your opponent, and then trigger Sarah to summon Romello and pop three back row, um, all in the span of like uh, one one card. And I think that's really really powerful power move that can you know swing the games around for like the trap matchups pretty well. Um, I also wanted just like back removal in general because I think uh, like some floodgates can be quite annoying. Uh, so having heavy storm duster can like you know help mitigate some of the issues. Uh, I got these two for only like a, a buck. They came out in uh, you know dual devastator, so they're relatively a very cheap uh, reprint set that uh, printed these cards, and, and I'm really happy I got them. Then I got three solemn judgment uh, from Battle Pack. Uh, this playset cost me about uh, twenty four dollars and. This card is really, really good because going first, one of the things I always talked about was Evenly Match being a devastating card against the deck. So having Solemn Judgment in your deck to counteract that is very, very important. So I wanted to add this card to my side deck, so I purchased it for about 24 bucks, And so far, we have about $25 worth of cards right here. Um, another uh, structure deck inclusive is actually Three Dimensional Barrier. This card got reprinted in the uh, Fall of Albaz structure deck. And um, I picked a playset up for about only like a uh, dollar. Uh, they're commons. Um, and yeah, this is great. This card is like absolutely insane. It's a normal trap that works really well with your Sarah. 
um, and be able to call like your opponent's card type means that they can't play. And it's just like a very, very all around amazing card. Um, so I really, really like this card and I, I have it in my side deck right now. So $26 worth of cards right now. For the other part of my side deck that I added was three Artifact Lancia, right? So the reason why I added this card in um, was because uh, this card is really good if, you know, you go first and your opponent plays something like Kashtira because it overlaps with hurting their engine as well as turning off their Illy match, right? So that's why I really, really like cards like Lancia because, like, uh, you can go first with it. Uh, if your opponent tries to Illy match you, you can, like, chain Lancia. Um, the evenly match doesn't resolve and then like all of their catch steer effects are like basically turned off right like they can't use frenier they can't use unicorn uh to like banish i mean um they can't use their pod card so lance is just like a really really solid card and i figured i wanted more hand traps uh for that matchup you know so i've got this place set for like a buck or two bucks i think it's not too bad relatively pretty cheap and then the the last thing i oh this card i didn't actually buy but this is also part of my structure deck. it came out in the chop trick structure deck so that's fine and then the last three cards i purchased for the side deck was three contact c um i uh used three super rares for my personal collection because i couldn't find the commons in time um but uh the contact c's should be about like a playset for about a dollar or two dollars they're they come common um and i'm currently using the super rares because i couldn't find the commons in time they're actually quite hard to find for some reason um, but this card is really good because against the Decimia matchup, you can summon this card to your opponent's field and, you know, stops them from, like, fusion summoning. I think in hindsight, maybe Retaliating C might have been better. Um, but this card uh, plays around Thrust a little bit better because if you summon Retal C, then they can Thrust and add a card. While uh, if you Contact C, you give it to their field. So, like, they can't Thrust and add, like, you know, a good card. Um, but, yeah, this was a card I wanted to try out. I wasn't sure how good it would be. Um, so I decided not to, um, you know, I, I just wanted to like test it out pretty much, uh, but it was okay. It's not too bad. And then I added also some extra deck cards, um, as well, which is one time thief redoer. This card was about $3. Uh, it's really, really good because, um, the end board I make actually ends on redoer with the trap. And I can show you, I show that off in uh, one of my combo videos. If you haven't watched that already, um, one exciter night, which is about eight bucks. And then one Zeus, which is about, um, you know, $20. So, uh, I couldn't find a better rarity excited night. So I just purchased the cheapest one that I could find at the, at the event. And, uh, you know, this was uh, for eight bucks an unlimited, beautiful secret rare, um, you know, and, uh, balling on a budget. so that's pretty much it guys. So, uh, just counting off, we have $20 here, $8 here, $4 here. So that's about like $32. Like I said, you can get the place of context C for a buck. So it's about, um, about like 33, uh 35 you have three d barrier for 36 uh three judgment 24 so it's 60 61 so 61 dollars worth of cards here and uh with the three impermanence and the three nibru that i showed off earlier um this so three nibru that would make it 73 dollars and then three impermanence that would be um uh Seventy-three dollars plus three imprimis is twenty-four would be ninety-seven dollars. Um, so, and as you know, the budget is uh, eighty dollars that we got in prize support from last week, plus um, twenty dollars for the video, um, and that's you know makes up our entire budget. But what's really cool is you guys notice that as I go through my list, that I actually don't play Lily Boria or this Colosseum anymore, and that they're still in my collection. So I could sell those at any point to like maybe facilitate or buy other cards instead. I um, mean, that's really the, the main reason why I borrowed Regulus in episode two, because I wasn't sure how good the card would be um, and I wanted to try it out. So I recommend that for those of you guys who are also on a budget, you know, if you have friends that you can borrow cards from, um, you know, just give it a shot or test on Dolomic and give it a try. Uh, see how that engine works for you. If you don't like it, then, you know, you can like sell it and then all that good stuff. Or in case you borrow it, you don't lose anything at all. Right. So. Now, let's get into the deck profile. So, we have three Mermelio, uh, still the same ratio, three Pudica, three Mantis, three Aerocampa, and then two Dianea, right? So, still the same um, from episode two. I think these are like the ratios you want to play for your Trap Trick monsters. Um, I really, really like these. Uh, these this ratio has been working really, really well for me. Um, three Parallel Exceed, uh, just one of the best extenders in the deck. Uh, not really much more to say about it. It, it, you know, it's a really good card because it combos with Sarah, 
to give you a trap as well, right? Because you can like summon parallel, overlay both of them into Pingakula. Pingakula effect will trigger and then Sarah will trigger. So has really, really good synergy with Sarah. Um, three Ash Blossom, uh, like I mentioned before. Um, just overall one of the best generic hand traps in the game. Uh, three Nibiru because I wanted to punish my opponent for overextending. And going first with Nibiru is really devastating because if you have traps uh, with with supported by Nibiru in your hand, it's really, really hard for your opponent to crack your board. Then I play uh, three Evely Match and three Infinite Impermanence as well. So these are like my 12 non-engine slots. Um, I think uh, yeah, the thing with Evely Match is that like it's a card that you can use to facilitate your combo going first. And it actually combos with Nib really well because like if you Nib your opponent and you give them a Nibiru token... If, and you put their token in attack mode. Uh, if their token is at 3,000 or greater, you can, um, or typically 3,100 or greater, then you can attack it, crash your Nibiru, then evenly mash them. And they have to keep their Nib token up so they lose their entire board uh, because uh, tokens cannot be banished face down. And as a result, they lose their entire board um, if you were to evenly match them. So kind of nice combo there. Um, I play the one Trap Trick Garden uh, just because of the Search of Pudica. And then for the traps, I play three Holotea. Two Trap Trick Hole Nightmare, two Floodgate Trap Hole, one Grave Diggers, one Terrifying, and then one Time Space. Um, time Space was a common from OTS 21, so uh, I didn't really include that in like the value, but it's like relatively really cheap, and everyone's pulling it. So you can literally ask like a, a homie or someone at your locals, hey, do you have a Time Space Trap Hole? And they're more than likely willing to give it to you for free, because um, I definitely just went around asked someone for a Time Space Trap Hole, which is like an OTS 21 common. It's like literally five cents. So that's it. 40 cards in the main deck. Um, like I said, I really want to add the fact that this main deck is very, very close to what I want the final list to look like. Um, it worked really well for me. Um, and yeah, let's get into the extra deck. Three Sarah, one Kular, one Adipus. That's the pretty much the extra deck for the Link Monsters that I've been liking. Uh, double Rafflesia. Uh, still very good. You need two to do your combo. One Alomaris, one Pingakula. Uh, one time three free doer, one evil swarm excite on night um, to like nuke your opponent's board, and this is actually the spice. I still play this package. A lot of people assume that I would actually not play this because I cut the theory on package. But the reason why I play the mirror maker and the champion Sargus is because it lets you make a four material Zeus with rank four, something that historically you couldn't really do before. And so uh, being able to overlay for a mirror maker and then and then overlay on top to make a Sargus is really really powerful. Um, because it allows you to make a four material Zeus, which gets you two Zeus activations. And that would actually win me um, a game. Um, that won me so many games by itself. The other thing is that like people forget that Sargus has an additional effect all the way at the end that says whenever an Xyz material is attached from a monster on the field, um, you can actually target a card on the field to either destroy it or bounce it to your hand. Well, that effect comes to work a lot when you're trying to OTK your opponent because you can have something like Olimaris or Rafflesia. And you can like detach from Olimaris to reborn back a card, trigger that monster, and then trigger Sargus, pop a card, and it helps you go for like OTK. So it's a really good removal card as well when you're going to uh, kill your opponent. So that's pretty much extra deck, the 15 cards right there. And then for this, and then the last two cards is the double Zeus, right? So uh, having access to two of these is really, really good, um, especially because of Diablosis in the format. And I think two Zeus actually came up for me where I attacked. Um, over into a Zeus, and then they pop one of my cards. I attacked again, um, attach a material to Zeus from its effect, and then overlaid for um, another Zeus. And, and that was actually really, really nice. For the side deck, I played two Heavy Storm Duster and one Trap Trick, uh, because Trap Trick is basically a third copy of Feather Storm Duster, but then a fourth copy of Dimensional Barrier. And I, I like the fact that it has that versatility, as well as the third copy of Trap Trick Hole Nightmare, as well as the third copy of Floodgate Trap Hole. So there's that. Uh, three Solemn Judgment, like I said, for going first, just to like play around uh, evenly and anything else. Uh, three Lancia, because it's really good at going first. And against decks like Fuan Riza actually came up to have Lancia as well. So yeah, Lancia was really good for me. I was really happy I played it. Um, and I played three Context C for the Death matchup. It could also be Retaliating C, um, either or, I think. Uh, this card was like very okay for me, very average. I might cut that card and play something else in the future. Um, that's pretty much the deck list with, guys. And... Yeah, this is what I played um, for the case tournament for episode three. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, film in, uh, inside the store uh, 
because I had to like go right to the regional after, so I didn't have my setup with me. Uh, but now we're gonna open the prize support and see how only thirty dollars from week one, and what that transitioned to, uh, with only a couple tournaments. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys. So this is the prize support that I got. I got a box and about eight packs from Photon Hypernova. Um, it was a case tournament, so we had to split the boxes kind of evenly. Uh, we got about like four boxes. Uh, so we split, you know, we each got a box each for the 3v3. Three three, and then I got eight packs from one box, which is about, you know, a third of a, a box. Um, personal record was uh, undefeated. I went 3-0-1. Um, I, oh I only had one draw because uh, time was very close. Um, and, like, uh, and I, my opponent, my opponent uh, couldn't deal with enough damage. So but other than that, I think I was in a winning position. I had, like, four traps in hand. And, uh, yeah, so... Let's uh let's jump right into the prize support. Let's open the loose packs first and see what we get from here, okay? So Queen Butterfly Domus, nothing good here. Ideally we want to get some uh some value, but this is about like I think a box and like the packs is about like eighty, ninety dollars worth of value if I were to just, you know, sell it straight. Um but I would say it's pretty good, you know. We want about like two hundred dollars worth of prize support. Uh, in only a couple of episodes, so it's been pretty nice. Ooh, we got a Generator Ultra. Might be worth some dollars. Um, ooh, we got Rinworm as well. So we got two Ultras so far. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see what else we pull. Ooh, Gold Pride. We got another Ultra. Wow, so we got three Ultras so far just from these packs. I mean, this is pretty good. Like, I'm pretty happy with what we've pulled. Gold price starter engine, not too bad. Okay, let's see what else we got. Made to order, made out mermaid outfit. All right. Then we pull. Ooh, Ferrant the circular sorcerer. Okay. Not bad. Oh, this card is this card is kind of a cool insect plant support. If an insect or plant monster you need to play as graveyard, is in need to play as graveyard, you can special them this card from your hand. And ooh, okay. And it's a level three insect tuner. Sick. Okay, not bad, not bad. Um, but all right, so we pulled that so far. Not bad. Uh, we got some value there. Um, now let's open this box, right? Let's see if we can pull the the starlight that everyone is chasing for. That would actually just end the series because pulling a starlight here would be like absolutely crazy uh, dollars worth of value. Um, but. Yeah, the goal of this deck, guys, is to take it to a regional and get an invite with it. Um, I, you know, kind of want to kind of just show people that you can uh, you can top a regional, get your invite to nationals with only 30 bucks. And, you know, after and then just keep playing, guys. The, the whole concept of the series is to keep playing, keep participating in tournaments, keep improving your gameplay, keep getting better. Um, and and uh, you'll be rewarded, right? Like. I think this Trap Trick deck is a very technical deck. Uh, you get rewarded for knowing all the interactions of the meta. And uh, and you can definitely do it. So I highly encourage you to start going to local. Start playing in more tournaments. Accumulate you know, your price support. Uh, upgrade your decks. Make it even better. Like I feel like this is the quintessential Yu-Gi-Oh experience. Um, this is what Yu-Gi-Oh is all about. You know? like, it reminds me of like Playground Yu-Gi-Oh. Where like, you just kind of like use whatever you can you know, with, with your budget. Um, and try to pull the best you could. So nice. You pulled a trivia karma here. Uh, so far, not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, let's see what else we can. Ooh, sneaky C. That's a cool card. Um, wish it was better though. But let's try to see. But yeah, yeah. Um, just to go on along the same topics. I think anyone could uh, do really well um, with any deck actually, as long as you put in the work and the time in. Um, and so. Oh my god, guys, we got another thrust. So, guys, we pulled two thrusts so far in the series. That's absolutely insane. Another $80 worth of value. That is some cash money right there. Jeez. Boys, we are popping off. Um, I love it. I love it, man. This this is great. That's what the series is all about, you know? Part of the cards. Um, ooh, this Ice Gate Synchro is actually really nice, too. Might actually come up for me in the future. I might have to uh, rob for my Boab packs so I can put in my Sword Soul deck or something, you know? <laughs> but uh, so far, two Ultras, one Secret. Not bad. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to put these uh, away. Right, let's keep opening the rest of these packs, guys. Let's see what else we got here. Ooh, the ultimate great insects. All right, nothing here. Then we have, ooh, another generator. I think we pulled another one in our other packs already. So we got two, two of those. Okay, we got the Ferient, a Circular Sorcerer. Not bad. We got the Dimension, the Adelope Varus. Okay, and ooh, Gravekeeper's Inscription. Guys, we pulled these exact same cards in Episode 2. Rigged? Rigged! Or maybe Episode 1 we pulled Inscription. I'm not sure, but not bad. Pretty good secret so far. I'm pretty happy about Thrust. It's like a free free card you know why not we target boost of let's get in the labyrinth deck sure let me catch Thera. okay beautiful card evigishi nerimanas okay guys can we pull a starlight out of nowhere that'll be nice right dog matrix and matrix Okay, last pack. Oh, oh, nothing here. But, guys, with the pulls we got, I'm actually not too mad about it. I feel like this is pretty sick. And, yeah, I'm excited. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Let me know how I can make my deck even better in the comment section below. And if I take your suggestions, uh, then uh, that will be pretty sweet. But, Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the series and the updated deck profile. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.